Moonine. Moonine. If only I could be with you. If only I knew the way to you. John. John. My dearest one. I'm always with you. I'm here whenever you need me. Why must I go through this any longer? Be patient, dear heart. Someday we'll be together again. These years have really only been but a few moments. And the years we must still wait will be just as short. Try to hear me, darling. Sometimes you do. Moonin. Moonin. Here. I found you, Ellen. You frighten everybody away. Now, look here, Sir John. I've told you time and again. No good will come of you wanting to talk with her who's gone these 30 years. No good? It's the only thing that keeps me alive. Sir John. Dr. Owen. Hello, John. Owen. Well. So you're back. Oh, that's the general impression. Well, well. How do you find Ireland? Oh, great fishing. Best in years. Oh, I missed you, John. You should have come. Change would have done you good. I don't need any change. That's where you're wrong. What? Well, you know what people are beginning to say, hmm? Mm, I know. They think I'm a bit touched, eh? Well, it, it's this confounded living in the past and trying to conjure up ghosts, you know. It's not doing you any good. Still, we won't talk about that now. That's where you're wrong, Owen. In the first place, I shall live the kind of life I want to live. Of course, John. Heaven knows I'm not interfering. I know better than that. Now, now, will you listen? And in the second place, I get a great deal of comfort out of what you call conjuring up ghosts. You see, I happen to believe that there are times when Moon Yin is very close to me. And I shall continue to believe so. Whatever people may think or say. John, old fellow, I said, let's not talk about it. Mind if I take a few? Oh, I'm sorry. Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. Have a drink? Of course I'll have a drink. Good. Ah. Well, here we are. John. Mm-hmm. Moon Yin's sister is dead. No. She and her husband were drowned a few days ago. A squall struck their boat off Dublin Bay. That's horrible. Yes. And that little mite of theirs is left practically unprovided for. Yes, yes I remember. There was a child. Yes, a little girl. She's a... She's a lovable little tot. Mm -hmm. They're, um... They're talking of putting her into an orphanage. What? Impossible. That's what I thought. Yes. So, you see, I... Now, John, uh, don't bite my head off, but what would you say to having her here? Here? The child in this house? Yes. Oh, don't be ridiculous. No, count on me for any amount. The child is what's needed in this house. Give you something to think about besides yourself. Out of the question. But, John, if you... Listen... No, 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 no. You see what I want... Owen, please, let's... Let's drop the subject, if you don't mind. John, I don't think I realized until tonight how much these years have changed. Oh, your grief's become a habit. You've grown selfish, more. You'll be good enough not to interfere in my affairs. You've huddled in your burrow so long, you've grown to hate the light. I shall do as I... Good night. Good night. I'll do as I please. Huh, ridiculous nonsense. Man's my own life. Who's going to dictate me? Found it. What the? Oh, what do you want? Here. Here, come here, come here, come. I don't think I like you. What? 
Oh, indeed. I resent that. Why not? You're so grumpy. I shall tell my daddy. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Apologize. I had no intention of being disrespectful, I assure you. Well, uh, won't you shake hands? We haven't been introduced. No, we haven't, have we? Well, well, what's your name? Kathleen, what's yours? <laughs> Mine's John. How do you do? How do you do? How old are you, Kathleen? I'm five in June. How old are you? Me? <laughs> Well, I, uh, I'm a little older than that. <laughs> yeah. Very, very, very pretty. This is a new frock. Very becoming. And I've got on my best panties with a little tuck. Yeah, it's a charming, charming. Char uh, won't you sit down, <laughs> Kathleen? Uh, uh, would you, uh... uh do you like to see some pretty pictures? No. No, thank you. You wouldn't, eh? You must have had a rough crossing. Yes, thank you. Hmm. I, uh... Perhaps you care for some... milk or something? No. No, thank you. <clears throat> uh, would you, uh... by any chance... Uh, like to make your home with me? No. No, thank you. Why not? Don't you like me? No. No, thank you. Oh. I I think I'd better be going now. Well, well, well won't you say goodbye? Goodbye. Um, uh, Mr. Toastmaster, ladies and gentlemen, and Miss Sheridan. <laughs> it is my pleasure and my privilege on this auspicious occasion... Here, here. I thank you. ...to offer my felicitations to as charming a lady as ever graced a bachelor's board. Come here. Hooray! 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 I thank you, I thank you. Thank you. Now, now to blow out the candles. Remember, you don't get your wish unless you blow them all out at once. Now, when I say three, Kathleen blows. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, oh that's wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, wonderful. How's that for a blow? Uh, <laughs> Nothing wrong with those lungs. <laughs> well, well. Don't you want me to blow out around here? Now, <laughs> well, what's the wish? Yes, please? what is it? Come yes. on, now, Kathleen. Come on, come on. Gentlemen, come on. don't rush now, me. <laughs> I wish that you weren't so generous. No. Mm -hmm. You leave me nothing to wish for. Mm -hmm. And what's more, you're the nicest person in the world, and, and I love you tremendously. There, that was rather sweet of me, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I think so. Even allowing for a little exaggeration. Why do you look at me like that? Strange. Every year you grow more like her. It's almost uncanny. Mooney and Claire? Hmm. Oh, but she was beautiful. Yes, she was beautiful. And charming. You're very like her, my dear. Thanks, darling. There, now, look at that. You made me all weepy. I knew it. I knew it. I've got that confounded thimble again. <laughs> Uh-huh. The ring. Good Lord, a wedding. Willie Ainley. Oh, help. <laughs> oh, well, Willie's not a bad fellow. Willie's a dear. I say, you know, Kathleen, I'm frightfully oh, gone on you. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a bad sort of chap. I'm steady. I'm reliable. Oh, come you. You mustn't make fun of Willie, Owen. Well, you could always rely on my being just as I am now. I should never change. Look here, old girl. I can't talk the romantic stuff, but I think you're simply ripping. I'm dripping, Willie. No, but look here, Kathleen. I've simply got to talk to you. It's my last chance. You know I'm going to camp tomorrow. <laughs> Whatever induced you to drag me 
miles from home in a storm. But the paper said fine. And it wasn't raining when we started. Well, what are you going to do? I can't think. There hasn't been a soul inside this house in nearly 50 years. There'll be two of us inside within 50 seconds. Isn't that a candle? Wait a jiffy. Willie, do you mean to say that nobody's been in this house for 50 years? Uh-huh. You know, Willie, there's some sort of mystery here. People don't go away and leave a house like this. Why didn't the maid tidy things up? Put that chair on his legs, the nighties on the furniture. Well, why worry about it? People were afraid to come into this room. Something had happened here, something, something strange and terrible. You have got an uncomfortable mind. They locked the doors and went away forever. As though there were a curse on the house. I say, you know, you're giving me the creeps. Willie! Oh, good heavens, what is it now? A wedding invitation. Mr. and Mrs. Richard Clare of Castle Clare, Wicklow, request the pleasure of the company of Jeremy Wayne, Jeremy Esquire. Jeremy Wayne, on the occasion of the marriage of their daughter, Munin, with Sir John Carter. By Jove, Sir John. Munin Clare, my mother's sister. But they never were married. She died that year. It was the tragedy of Uncle John's life. Strange. Do you suppose it could be linked in some way with this house, with this man? Beats me. Look at this. When Jeremy Wayne got it, he crushed it in his hand, threw it away. Why would he do that? Probably he was blotto. He'd emptied half the decanter. Don't be an ass, Willie. It's as clear as day. Jeremy Wayne, he loved her too. I know what happened in this room. He killed himself. What? That's why they closed the doors and left things as they were. He couldn't face life without her. They found him here. <laughs> Just a log. Don't you think perhaps we'd better get out of here? Oh, is it a real carriage? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Yeah. Ghastly weather, isn't it? Ghastly? Ghastly? Yeah. Ghastly. You were caught in the storm, I suppose. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. 
Pardon me if I'm inquisitive, but are you, uh, are you stopping here? Oh, dear, no. <laughs> no, it, it was raining very heavily. We were standing under a tree, and the lightning hit the next tree and, uh, uh, and killed two cows. Cows? What cows? Yes, two cows. No, three. Yeah, I saw the bodies. <laughs> Oh, so then we broke in to get out of the storm. <laughs> yeah, we, we were all wet. Oh, yeah? I wish the place were more comfortable for you. Oh, I'm glad you were able to make a fire. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you. I can do that. Oh, thank you. I'm afraid you've caught a cold. Yeah, I wish I could offer you something warm. Excuse me. Do you mind if I take this for a moment? Well, really, no. I, uh, I shan't be long. Who on earth is he? I have a pretty good idea. Well? Watch him. Did you see the way he looked at that silver? Oh, don't be silly. something under his arm. The very thing for you. Old port. Look. 1847. Mm -hmm. 47? That was the best I could find. In any old port in a storm. <laughs> Perhaps we should introduce ourselves. My name's Ainley. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you. Well, you surely don't intend to open that, do you? I'm going to do my best. But uh, really, you know, it isn't your property. Well, that's a nice point. I'll take it up later. Do you realize that stuff's worth three or four pounds a bottle? Well, that to be pretty good. Well, are you going to sit there and be of a pa party to this? I thought of doing just that. There we are. Oh, do you mind? Thank you. Not at all. Not at all. Oh, just a very little. Huh? That's enough. Win! Uh, fellow criminal? <laughs> Won't you join us? Certainly not. Oh. How, uh, how about a toast? I know one. Uh -huh. Here's to your health, your honor, and the health of all your descendants, great and small. That's a mighty handsome toast. <laughs> it's an Irish toast, the best I know. May you keep as young and as pretty as you are until doomsday. Never forget the man who wished it. I wonder now as I look at you. Have we never met before? No, I guess we haven't. I shouldn't have forgotten. Oh, could you be Irish, too? Yeah, I could, if I saw <laughs> enough of you. Oh. <laughs> well, if you're not Irish, you're American. How do you know that? Huh? By the way you said ghastly. Yeah, how should I say it? Well, I mean, how do I say it? Ghastly. Ghastly. No, just ghastly. 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 Costly? Oh, yeah. Not like that. Huh? <laughs> no. Okay, yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, never mind. We, we won't worry about it. <laughs> Ridiculous. Mm, what I've been missing all these years about ever drinking Uncle's port. Mm -hmm. I think you're making a mistake, Willie. I don't think I am. Oh, uh, sit down, old boy. Sit down, please. Tell me, what are you doing in England? I came over to join up. But it's not your war. Well, I'm half English. And a scrap's a scrap. I like that. Do you know this is scandalous of us? But I don't think he'd mind. Who? Why, the owner, Jeremy Wayne. Isn't he a romantic figure? <laughs> I love that devil take you look. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know you don't look unlike? That's my father. 
Your father? But I'm Kenneth Wayne. Well, this is romance. <laughs> You're telling me. Why, hello. Hello, Mr. Wayne. Isn't this nice? Hey, great. Great. I, I just happen to be taking a bicycle ride around the country. All alone? How too bad. Oh, yeah, just all alone. Yeah. Oh, well, you see, I always take an extra bicycle with me in case anything happens. Why, of course. How stupid of me. Yeah, I might possibly run into some man who uh, wants to take a ride with me. Or some lady. Do you, uh, you know any ladies who like to ride bicycles? I couldn't possibly interest you in a horse, could I? Oh, I have lots of them in my stable. Oh, is this where you live? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what a coincidence that I should just happen to be sitting on your wall. A charming coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, it's a shame that you live there, you know. I mean, you, uh, you seem so human. <laughs> I hope you're not going to run away from me because of where I live. I thought you Americans were democratic. Well, it's sort of a shock to uh, find out that Cinderella is really a princess. <laughs> but I turned back into a pumpkin at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't sure that it was your house. I mean, when I saw you in it, I uh, still had hopes that you might have just been visiting. You know? In it? When did you see me in it? Oh, last night. You watched me from the outside last night? Well, just till you went to bed. I, I mean, till you went upstairs. Well, I'll be darned. A window peeper. Oh, no, I wasn't peeping. No, I was just looking. <laughs> see, there's not much to do around here nights, and uh, I sort of wanted to see where you lived, you know? Oh. oh, well, anyway. I might have known it wouldn't work out. So you wanted to see where I lived, hmm? Yeah. What do you mean, not work out? Well, a princess wouldn't want to go bicycle riding. No? But Cinderella might. Here, let, wait, let, let me help you. I haven't ridden in years. <laughs> <laughs> Window peeper. Some more tea? <clears throat> Smarty good tea. Not as good as I can make. No? Well, make very good coffee, too. Can you sew on buttons? Mm-hmm. Darn socks, and and I, I'm very nice with children. <laughs> you know, you, you'll make somebody a good wife. Thank you, sir. That I will, sir. <laughs> uh, oh, I suppose I'll have to go home and get dressed for dinner. Oh, no, not yet. Well, we, we, we've just come here. <laughs> we've been here for three hours. Oh, no. Has been fun, hasn't it? Oh, it's been swell. I never knew that bicycling could be so enjoyable. Oh, yes. There's nothing like a good bicycle. You know, it's a little like that old song, A Bicycle Built for Two. I don't know it. Well, neither do I. I mean, it's, it's sort of a song. I see. About a bicycle built for two? Yes. Yeah. Gee, you're a great girl. Well, uh, have some more tea, hmm? What's doing that? France. Guns. Mm -hmm. Gee. All right, all right, all right. Don't get impatient. I'll be over there in a month. <laughs> <laughs> a month? Is there anything else I can get you? Oh, no, thank you. Thank you, Miss Crosby. Well, lovely. A month. Well, just about. Mm -hmm. oh, Mrs. Crouch, uh, I'm afraid we're going to have to stay for dinner. Dinner, sir? Oh, I don't serve dinner, sir. Oh. Well, it, uh, it uh, looks too much like rain to risk going out. You see, Miss Sheridan here had an aunt who, who caught cold in a rainstorm once and, and almost died. 
Oh, that's too bad. But it isn't going to rain, sir. Oh, but you can never can tell. Please, Mrs. Krause, just something easy. Well, we can cook it ourselves. Just some chops and maybe a steak. Yeah. Have, have you got any ale? And how about a little salad? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because I think love is... You know what love is? What? Well, of course, there's... There's different kinds of love. I know, but... We were talking about... Real love. No. Yeah. Real love... Lasts forever. Yes, I know, but... There are no buts. I know what I'm talking about. Love is... Love is something you feel. It just happens. You can't do anything about it. If I love somebody, I'd love him forever. To Major Owen, R.A.M.C. Well, I never saw the child drink pop before. In your honor, sir. Oh, thank you, my dear. A soldier... A gentleman, but a miserable chess player. Absolutely <laughs> untrue, isn't it, Kathy? What vintage is this? Huh? Uh, Coburn's 96, if it really interests you. 96. Hmm, not bad for new wine. What? Not bad, eh? Oh, listen to the girl. Coburn's 96, not bad. <laughs> I don't mean it's not good, but it doesn't compare with the 47. Hmm, 47. What do you know about the 47? I had a glass of it the other day. Oh, you did, eh? Mm-hmm. Who gave it to you? A man I met with Willie. Oh. Uh-huh. What man? Yes, come on, Kathleen. I'd <laughs> like to know a man with a bit of 47. <laughs> Could we meet him? <laughs> oh, yes, I suppose so. Come on, out with it. Well, Willie and I went into an old house to get out of the storm the other day. Whose house? Oh, just a big, empty house. Oh, I smell a story in there. <laughs> well, there's no sense in making a mystery of it. It was the old Wayne house. Wayne house? You know that old deserted house back off the Maidstone Road? Not a soul been in it for 50 years. And then quite unexpectedly in walks the owner from America. What? Back. Jeremy Wayne. Oh, no, Uncle John. Not Jeremy Wayne. Jeremy Wayne is dead. This was his son. He came to join up. Uncle John. 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 Oh, and what is it? What did this Jeremy Wayne do? I can't tell you. But in heaven's name, I... That's his wish, Kathleen. You must forget it. Forget it? How can I, Owen? You must tell me. No, I can't. Then I must ask him... Oh, no. You must not, please. You don't know how it would hurt him. Oh, don't insist, my dear. It's better so. Believe me. Won't you come in, dear? I'm sorry I said anything that hurt you. Kathleen, this young man, this Wayne, he's in the army, you say? Yes, he's in camp at Hive. It's just half an hour from here. Oh, but let's not talk about him, dear. I should prefer that you don't ever see him again. Uncle John, why mustn't I see him again? He's really awfully nice. I think you'd like him. We've become rather good friends. Friends? Yes, and I'm sure Be you... Be silent. You sicken me. When did you meet this man? A week ago, almost. Have you seen him since? Yes. How often? Why, quite often. Kathleen, you must promise me never to see him again. I can't promise. I want to see him. Why shouldn't I? Are you in love with him? Are you? Answer me. I don't know. If I am in love with him... Oh, I don't know. 
He's not in love with me anyway. At least we've never said anything. I only know I can't bear the thought of not seeing him again. I'm sorry, Uncle John. I can't help it. I... I just can't. Listen, my child. I'm going to tell you something you should have known long ago. It's been my fault, I suppose. But I hoped I never would have to tell you. I hoped I never would have to live it all over again. It's almost 50 years ago. I can see it as if it were yesterday. This garden, a June night, the same scent of roses on the air. Excitement, people coming and going, little lanterns among the trees. And from the ballroom, the sound of an orchestra. It was the night before our wedding. I remember it so well. The house was filled with people. Sweetheart, this is our dance, isn't it? Is it? I forgot. Of course it is. Come on. deserve this. I'm sorry, old man, but you don't. I know it. I know it, but it's too late He's now. Oh. <laughs> crazy. Absolutely crazy. Well, he hasn't said a sensible thing all evening, Owen. Can you blame him? Uh, I'll tell you the truth, I'm not making much sense myself. Oh. <laughs> I've never been so happy. Have you had a drink yet, Owen? Hey, yes, I stopped for a quick one for George and Dragon. Oh, you did, eh? Well, yes. No, no more, John. Go on. Oh, no. Well, no, just no, one. one. Oh, by the way, uh, Jeremy Wayne was there. Huh? Why didn't you bring him along? Well, he was in pretty bad shape, John. Drinking more than was good for him. Yeah, he takes it pretty hard, doesn't he? Poor devil. Well, I can't say I blame him either. You know, Wayne's a wild sort of fellow, John. I was a bit worried about him. He was making vague sort of threats against you. <laughs> yes, you know what that is. That, that's that George and Dragon Brandy. <laughs> pretty dangerous stuff. Do you remember the night when you wanted to marry the barmaid? After just two glasses of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have had some good times, haven't we? Haven't we? Oh, my Lord. And don't you think we're, we're, they're going to end either, you blithering idiot? No, but um, seriously, John. Now, drink it. Go on, drink it. All right. I want to get back to Mooneen. I can't bear to let that girl out of my sight for more than a minute or two. <laughs> this... Just, just live with that. Is a white cot by the sea. There's a little green gate at whose turn is I wait while two eyes of blue come smiling through at me. I'd tell you he was here, Miss Mooneen. But I wouldn't see him, Miss. Not if I was you. Quite right, Mary. You go back into the house. But I don't think he's quite himself, Miss. I'll tell Sir John. No, no, Mary. You must.
heart, Jerry. I knew you couldn't let me get married without coming to wish me joy. What's the matter, Jerry? What is it? You know what it is. Come in. We're expecting you. No, no, you're not. Please, Jerry, don't act like this on the night before my wedding. You don't need to remind me what night it is. Jerry, dear, we're not going to go all over that again, are we? As though I weren't tortured enough. As though you weren't driving me mad. That's not quite fair, is it? You look so beautiful in that dress. Thanks, Jerry. I had an awful time getting it to fit. I was so afraid it was going to be an utter failure. Oh, Wolfine. Wolfine. Oh, Jerry. Please don't. I'm sure any pity for a man in hell. Oh, Jerry, dear, you mustn't. Get up. You're not going to marry him. All my life I've loved you. Jerry, it isn't easy for me either to have you say things like this. I'm so fond of you. It was understood between our families that we were to marry. It was understood by everyone. Yes, but Jerry, this needn't mean the end of our friendship. Nothing should end that. After all, girlhood and boyhood sweethearts don't always marry. <laughs> girlhood and boyhood sweethearts. <laughs> you were such a cunning little boy. And you were such a beautiful little girl. Now, we mustn't ever let anything spoil that. Don't you see what I mean, dear? Mario will be in his arms, this man you're marrying. What right is he to take you from me? Why is he better than I? What is there in me that's wrong? Nothing, Jerry, nothing. Is it because I drink? I drink because I'm unhappy, and I'm unhappy because of you. And this other man, he has no faults. He's perfect. Well, I tell you, we shall not have you. The man doesn't live who can take you from me. The man will not live who takes you from me. Jerry! Oh, I'm marrying John tomorrow. I'm marrying him because I love him. I loved him from the moment I saw him. I shall always love him. Because he stands for everything that's beautiful and fine and true. And even if he didn't, I should still love him. Ah, good evening, madam. If you're not busy tomorrow afternoon, how'd you like to marry me? What's the matter, dear? Something wrong? No, nothing. Something I've done? Something I've said? Because if it is, I, I didn't mean it. No, oh, John, dear. Hold me close. Anything about the wedding? No. Not unhappy, are you? How could I possibly be unhappy tonight? <laughs> you are a funny little thing. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> Sometimes I get a little scared. How on earth did we two ever happen to get together? I know. To think that out of all the millions of people in the world... <laughs> Can you imagine what fun is going to be in this house? Oh, Just you and I. Everything's fun. I'm so excited about going to Paris. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. You know, I know a marvelous restaurant in the Rue Royale. You do? Yes, you wait. Voulez-vous? <gasps> Une embrasse. Oui, s'il vous plaît. Merci, monsieur. Ce n'est rien. Encore? Encore. Oh, no. <coughs> What's the use of going to Paris? <laughs> What's the use of doing anything except sitting here the rest of our lives? Except the food's awfully good in Paris. It's going to be a beautiful honeymoon spent in a restaurant. <laughs> Darling. Like my ring? It's a beauty, isn't it? Belonged to my great great grandmother. Really? Mm -hmm. I said, let's practice, shall we? With this ring, I thee win. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good, wasn't it? Huh? <laughs> uh, maybe I better <laughs> practice dropping it once or twice. Huh? <laughs> Look, there, there, there. There's really nothing to this getting married, is there? You see how easy it is? I, I, I can do it with my eyes shut. With this ring, I thee wed. You know, this is fun. What on earth are you doing? It's fun opening my eyes and seeing you. Wouldn't it be marvelous if every time I open my eyes for the rest of my life, you, you were there? I will be. 
and always as beautiful as you are tonight. Well, after I get the ring on, what happens next? Hmm? You kiss me. Oh, that, that, that's going to be very difficult. Tonight is the last time we ever have to say goodbye, isn't it? Yes. Never any more partings. No more separate plans. No. No different thoughts. Just we two made one. Forever. And forever. Amen. this man to thy wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou obey him and serve him, love, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto him, so long as ye both shall live? I will. Wayne. Jerry, at my wedding. There'll be no wedding. Be silent, sir. You mad, Wayne? Get out of here. You took her away from me. But by heaven, you'll never have her. No, Jerry, no! Surely you can do something. You must do something. John. Yes, dear. It hurts. Make it stop. Are you all right? Yes, dear. 
Lois. Am I? Is it? It's nothing, darling. Owen will help you. John. Darling. Where? The ring. John, where are you? I'm here, my love. Darling, don't leave me. Don't leave me. John, isn't it a pity? white and still in my arms. She was dead. All that I lived for was gone. It was the end. I came back alone to this house, all gay with flowers for her. I sat alone where I sit now, the whole night through. Poor darling. I've sat here many times since. Whenever I'm in trouble or sorrow, I come here. For it's here that she returns to me. Year after year, she has come. Always when I needed her, she was beside me. She was here in this garden. I know, dear. I understand. Kathleen, tonight you told me that Jeremy Wayne was dead. I'm sorry I didn't kill him. Uncle John. After the police had given up the search, I tracked him for years through half the ports of South America. For years, I hunted him in my dreams. I killed him in my dreams. Now he is dead. And his son. His son. But Kenneth never knew his father. He was a baby when he died. But, Kathleen, listen. You must promise me to have nothing more to do with the son of that man. You mean it's... It's never? Never. Kathleen... I promise. Uh, good evening. Good this evening. Uh, Miss Sheridan at home? No, sir. She's out. You told her I called Wednesday. Oh, yes, sir. And, uh, and Friday? She was sorry to miss you, sir. Oh, was she? Well, uh, I guess I'll wait. What's the matter with you, Ellen? I didn't want to interrupt you, sir. It's for Miss Kathleen, sir. Oh. Uh, uh, the man from the canteen, miss. He's here again. 
Mess in the canteen. What's he doing here this hour of the night? I'd better go out and see what he wants, dear. I won't be a minute. Very peculiar. Hello, Ken. Why wouldn't you see me? I can't tell you here. Ellen! Ellen! Who's that? That's my uncle. He mustn't know you've come. Why not? What's wrong? What's it all about? We can't talk here again. I guess I shouldn't have come. Oh, please don't think that. We'll get away from the house. Yeah, I suppose he's right. <laughs> Certainly is great to find out that your father did a thing like that. I'm sorry, but I had to tell you. Oh, sure, sure. Well? Well... There's... There's really nothing else we can do, is it? No, I guess the whole thing was cockeyed anyway, with me going to the front so soon. Besides, we... We hardly know each other, do we? No. These, uh... Poor boy, rich girl things usually are busts anyway. Yes, I guess we were just as lucky to have stopped it now, weren't we? Yeah. It's a pretty close shave, though. We, we might really have uh, got to... Uh... Yes. Well, it's been nice to have known you, miss. <laughs> if you're ever in Cleveland. Cleveland? That sounds so awfully far away. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Goodbye. We don't seem to be... No, we don't, do we? <laughs> if we are in love... Well, we can't be that, can we? We mustn't see each other, though. Or must we? Well, that wouldn't be right. Except that as long as I'm going to France... But wouldn't it be easier if we didn't... I don't know that it would. We can't just... We aren't children, are we? No, that's right. We've, we've got to use our heads, but... This is a juice of a game with you going to sleep after every move. I wasn't asleep. Uh, <clears throat> even if I were, I could beat you. <laughs> By the way, where does Kathleen keep herself these days? Oh, heaven knows. Why? Well, haven't seen much of her lately. Nobody has. Canteen keeps her pretty busy. Oh, I see. Hmm. The canteen. Worse than ever today. Those guns must be over a hundred miles away. And still they go out in thousands to fill the gaps. Oh, I thought I'd never get away today. Same here. Am I very late? Only a minute. A minute's a year. Hello, darling. Hello, you. Sweet. <laughs> Glad to see me. Now, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, good heavens! Look at 
that spread. <gasps> Those big sticky buns. <laughs> I've already had one tea. <laughs> oh, we'll pretend to eat, darling, or you'll break our heart. <laughs> oh, good afternoon, Miss Scott. Good day, Miss. I'm bringing the tea. Fresh made. Oh. Ah, sinkers. They're not sinkers, sir. They're donuts. Oh, yeah. There. Now I've just got to get the scones. Scones? They're in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, let me see. What may I help you to? A radish? A sinker? Uh, neither, if you please. Yeah, uh, neither. If you please. Yeah, if you please. <laughs> <laughs> How about a cookie? You pick me out a nice slender one, please. How about that one? Ah, thank you. Darling. Darling. Hey, Kathleen. Kathleen. What is it, Ken? We're, uh... We're pushing off. When, dear? Tonight. Here we are. And piping hot. And they're good, though I said it shouldn't. I'm sure they are. Thank you, Mrs. Cross. My mother taught me to bake. My word, she was the one to bake. And her dumplings, oh, you just put your fork into them, and they went... Mm. Eh? Well, uh, I dare say you'll be wanting to be alone. Yeah. If there's anything at all you want, just call me, will you? Yes, thank you. Ken, how can they? You're not half trained. No, I guess they need more men. Yes, but... so soon. Oh, well, I'll get leave, you know, darling. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well... Uh... Let's be nonchalant, shall we? Naturally. Allow me. <laughs> Many thanks. <laughs> no use. I feel like one of Mrs. Thingamy's dumplings. <laughs> I've, I've gone poof. That's sweet. Oh, dear, no. Oh, no, darling, don't. Please. I'll be back, you know. Yes, of course. Ken. Just how long have you? We've got to make Dover tonight. We have a day's leave there, and then we're off to France the next morning. Couldn't you get leave now until time to leave from Dover? Well, only if... only for something extra special. And... Take me to Dover with you. Tonight. You have your thought, darling. It's only a few hours. Then I'll leave you, and... Yeah, I may not come back. But we shall have had those hours, dear. It'll help me to wait. And if it's all we ever have, it'll help me to live. I shall have been your wife. My wife. <laughs> Darling. I love you. Go back to camp. Get leave to join the draft of the boat. Tell them you're going to be married. I'll throw some things in a bag, then you come for me. Sure. I'll be with you in half an hour. <laughs> Wait. Oh, but what, what, what about your uncle? What do you tell him? I'll tell him the truth. I must know. So you'll never consent. Whatever happens, darling, I'll be waiting. <laughs> Pray for me. <laughs> Mrs. Crouch. Uncle John. <laughs> what, darling? There's something I must tell you. What is it, my dear? I've broken my promise to you. What? 
What promise? I've been seeing Kenneth Wayne. We love each other. We're to be married. Married? I meant to keep my word. I tried. I really tried. He called several times and I refused to see him. Then when I did see him at last, it was, it was only to explain. I should never have promised Uncle John. I loved him from the first. He's splendid and fine. Won't you try to forget what his father did? Won't you beat him just for my sake? He's going to the front. We've only tomorrow. We're to be married before he leaves. I'd sooner see you dead. Excuse me, Sir John. Miss Kathleen. Ask him to wait, Ellen. No. Bring him in here. Uncle John, please. Bring him in here. This way, sir. Good evening, sir. I'm Kenneth Wayne. My uncle wanted to see you. Sir. It's all right? I'm ready to go with you. I hope you understand, sir. I understand only one thing about a Wayne. What's that? The quality of your breed is not to take its medicine. That's why your father took the life of one person and ruined that of another. He couldn't take his medicine. I don't think you have any right to put it like that. Kenneth, I'm going with you just as I promised. If she marries you, if she becomes your wife just as you're leaving, and you never come back, You'll have smashed into her life for a few futile, cowardly hours. Because I shall never forgive any part of it. I'm coming back and I'm going to make her happy. It's the only thing in the world I want to do. You ought to forget and forgive and try to help us. When I forget, it'll be because I'll be dead. If he takes you from me, then he can take care of you. That's my last word, Kathleen. I shall not change it. Come on. Let's get out of here. We can get the next train and be in town in time for dinner. We mustn't wait a second, dear. We have so little time. Kathleen, we can't do it. I'd be an utter cat. I've nothing but my shilling a day. We can talk about that in Dover. You're not coming to Dover. He meant what he said. He wouldn't take you back. And day after tomorrow, you just... I don't care what happens day after tomorrow. Any more than I care what happened 50 years ago. Oh, darling, I love you so. Is that all? Oh. Don't you want me oh. to? I want you. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm yours, you're mine. I want that to be true before you go. Darling, I, I can't. I'd have no peace of mind. Oh, Ken, don't send me away. We may never be together again. We may regret all our lives that we wasted these last hours. I can't, Kathleen. It wouldn't be fair. Oh, Ken, if you love Kathleen, me. Kathleen, will you listen to me? No. I won't listen. I won't. I won't. But, dear, please be reasonable. Gee, this is our last half hour and we wasted an argument. I can't take you from comfort and security and leave you with nothing. I can't do it. Well, I can't force you to take me. You haven't convinced me at all. But of course, if you... If you don't want me... Oh. Oh, darling. Darling, it... Hmm? You're right. I've known it all the time. I've been an awful prune. Oh, no, darling. No, you I haven't. Have. You're far from a prune. By the time I get through with you, you won't be fit to find anyone. <laughs> You're telling me. <laughs> That's sweet. Come on, darling. Now I've got to get going. The train leaves at 10 after. Uh, no, dear. The uh, 20 after. After? After. <laughs> will you, uh, will you see me to the station? Hmm? I don't think I could, dear. All those people, I, I know I disgrace you. Better say goodbye. No. Bye. 
Goodbye. Oh, I can't. Dolly, you're not going to start this all over I again. I love you. I love you. I can't help Darling, it. Darling, it's a war, and I'm in it. Why can't you take me with you? Dolly, if I don't please? go, I'll get caught marching. Oh, I don't care whether you get caught marching or not. Don't you love me a little bit? <laughs> She isn't coming back, John. She couldn't do that to me. I don't believe... Kathleen. Kathleen. Well? Because of your threat, he wouldn't marry me. He's gone now. He may never come back. If God's just, he never will. John, John, what devil has got into you? Go after her, beg her to forgive you if she ever can. I haven't asked your advice. I'm giving it. That boy you wish dead is a fine chap. I met him several times at the depot. One of the best. So after all we've been through together, you're on his side too. I'm on Kathleen's side and I say you're wrong. You're doing a wicked thing. And one day you'll bitterly regret it. Just a moment, Owen. You say I'm doing a wicked thing because I can't take the son of her murderer to my heart. Well, I can't. I may be all you say, but at least I'm loyal to her, which is the best I know. And I shall continue to be so till the end. And who pays the price of your loyalty? You must think of the living as well as the dead. You've said enough, Owen. You're willing to sacrifice every decent human sentiment to a bitter memory that should be forgotten. Owen, if you can say that, if that's how you feel, I don't think you and I can go on as we have done. You... you mean that, John. I never meant anything so much. It's... it's been a great many years, John. I've said my last word. each other, as we did long ago. He may never come back to her, John. If you build a barrier between those who love, it will stand between your soul and mine for all eternity. Beloved, beloved, can't you hear me? Unless you drive this hatred out of your heart, unless you right this wrong, why, you can never come to me. Why have you deserted me? Never stop, I can't hear. Kathleen. 
I'm sorry. You might be looking for me. My mistake, what? I'm so glad to see you, Willie. Don't you look well? Oh, please forgive me for not answering your last letter. Oh, the one before that? <laughs> <laughs> You're a fine one, you are. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right, Kat. I really didn't expect you to. <laughs> well, I suppose I'd better be barging along. All the luck in the world, Kat. Thank you. I'll see you again sometime. Six cases tonight, sir. Very good. Take it easy. I'll fetch you a cab or something. Doctor, will you do me a favor? Will you, for heaven's sake, look at my legs and stop being so nice about them? Of course. You're, uh, you're coming up to the hospital. Oh, no, no, I'm discharged. Splendid! Uh, then you can stay with me. I know someone who's waiting. I'm sailing for America tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow. I just came down to get some things from the old house. The Kathleen. Do I look like a man who wants to see a girl? She, uh, she loves you, Ken. She loves me, doesn't she? Well, what of it? She'll get over it, won't she? You want her to get over it? For heaven's sake, doctor, use your head. Yes, 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 let her get over it. You're a doctor, give her pills. <laughs> loves a disease, isn't it? Cure her, cut it out of her. I'm afraid it isn't that easy. All right, it isn't that easy, so what? Tell her I'm a dirty swine. Tell her I'm going back to America to marry a million dollars. Tell her I got married to Mademoiselle from Armentiers. Tell her anything. 
for, but it means so much to her, Ken. Why not just see her? Why not? Because I haven't got the... Because I'm shot to pieces. Because I'm still in love with her, if you must know. And now will you, for the love of Judas, let me alone? Let me alone! Let me alone! Captain Wayne, sir. Captain Wayne. Orderly. Sir. Look out. Captain, look out. Take it easy. Now, up Wait. with him. That's right. Give me that. That's it. Steady now, Ken. Give me that. Give, give me that crutch. There you are. There we are. Yeah. Uh, you wait sir. here, sir. Thanks. I've got a carriage waiting. I'll get it. I'll, I'll, I'll walk to it. Now, Wayne. Well. Well, you see, Doctor? Yes. I see. Here you I'm sorry, I, I blew up back there. Oh, please. Thanks, Doctor. Goodbye. And forget what I told you. Forget you saw me. We certainly had great luck with our girls, didn't we? Enough to choke you. I've packed up the few things you wanted, sir. Anything else? Oh, that's all. Come on, let's get going. Righto. <laughs> oh, beg pardon, sir. But just now, a most extraordinary thing happened. Yeah. I was down in the cellar and I accidentally ran into a, a few bottles of very old port. 1847. Uh, did we take it? No, what do you think? We take it. Shall be a minute, pack it up. What time's the train? 10 5, sir. You better make it snappy. Snappy is the word, sir. Well, old man, we've got an hour. Let's sit down and feel sorry for ourselves. Here's to your health, your honor, and the health of all your descendants, great and small. That's a mighty handsome toast. <laughs> it's an Irish toast, the best I know. May you keep as young and as pretty as you are until doomsday. And never forget the man who wished. Oh, Ken! Ken! Kathleen, hello. Is it you? Darling. I can't believe it. Darling, I knew you'd come. I knew you'd come. Oh, sweet. It's, it's so wonderful to have you in my arms again. I, I, I waited so long. Darling. And how are you? How are you, dear, sweet, poor darling? Let me look at you. I wish I wasn't crying so much. I could see you properly. Yes. Oh, darling. Oh, dear, dear, sweetheart. Are you glad to see me? You haven't said so, you know. Of course I am. Oh, darling. Of course you are. You know, I went out of the station. I didn't find you. I must have missed you somehow or other. I was so frightened. But, dear, you're... You're here, and, and you're alive, and that's all that matters, and... How did you know I was here? Oh, I, I saw the light in the window, dear. I just took a chance. I ran up here all the way. My heart was pounding. I was so afraid I wouldn't find you. So you ran all the way? Yes, I ran all the way. I broke the record. <laughs> what do you say we, we sit down, shall we? Oh, darling. Oh. Over, over here? Oh, I... When did you get in? Why didn't you let me know? Why haven't you written all these months? Oh, I lost your address. Lost my address? <laughs> I thought you'd lost an arm or something. You, you didn't lose an arm, did no, you? No, I don't think so. <laughs> lose anything else? Mm -hmm. Lose your heart? Oh, hundreds of times. <laughs> Liar. Mine's still here, too. It's so excited, my heart. 
It's so happy. Darling, is your heart happy, too? Yeah, I, I don't see why not. It's been such a long, long way to Tipperary. Such a long time to wait. Yeah. <laughs> but now there's no reason why you... I mean, no reason why... I... Why you and I... Because you have come back to me, dear. You know, I sort of thought that maybe you wouldn't be here when I got back. That's a strange idea. Why not? Well, I don't know. Everything else in the world is so changed. I, I sort of thought maybe you might not still be so crazy about, about this place. Well, I love it here. You know that. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Well, Kenneth, what are you driving at? <laughs> Want me to live somewhere else? You know I'd live anywhere in the world with you. But you... You like it here, eh? Yes. Oh, that's fine. See, that's fine. Maybe, maybe I was right that day that I, <clears throat> I made you go back to your uncle when you wanted to come with me. Well, maybe, but don't let's talk about those things now, dear. You're back, and that's all that matters. By the way, how, uh, how, how is your uncle? He hasn't changed about you, dear. But neither have I. He hasn't changed, eh? Still nursing that old sorrow of his. But we're not going to let that make the least bit of difference now, dear. See, it must be great to be like that. Love one woman all your life. Why, yes, it must be. How's everything else been? How's, what's his name, uh, Willie? Will he get back all right? Oh, that's good. That's good. You know, Willie, Willie might be just the type at that. Willie would love somebody all of his life. Kim, what are you talking about? I, I'm just rambling along. What will you stop? Just reminiscing. Gee, we had a lot of fun here, didn't we? Remember the day we met right in this room, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot yeah. of fun. Do you know how badly we felt that afternoon? I, we found out I was shoving off for France. Oh, boy, was that love or wasn't it? Kenneth. We certainly took it seriously, that little affair of ours. Too bad we had to go to war and grow up. Kenneth, what are you saying? What are you trying... What do you mean, little affair of ours? Ken, what's happened to you? Well, I've, I've been to war. I know you've been to war. I've been waiting for you because I love you. And I thought you loved me. I thought you wanted me. I, uh... I'm sailing for America. Tomorrow. What do you mean, uh, Alone? Alone. But Ken, I'm... I'm ready to go with you, dear. Oh, you're joking. Don't joke, dear. Don't scare oh, no, me Kathleen, like that. Let's, let's, let's not... When the thing's over, it's, it's over. Oh. It's over. I see. It's over. <laughs> then why did you come here? Did you want to make sure you didn't love me? Well, I hope you're sure now. I hope you'll forget all about our little affair. Forget that I loved you, that I waited for you, that I would have waited for you always. Kathleen, I've, I've changed. Yes, that's right. That's certainly right. Four years and... Well, you... You change. Yes, of course. I know. Of course you've changed. I'm sorry, Kenneth, I... I didn't mean to throw myself at your head. I didn't mean to embarrass you like this. I've been quite stupid, haven't I? Taking it for granted that you'd still be. Well, I guess there's not much more to say, is there? Except goodbye. Goodbye, Ken. Here we are, sir. Anything else? Oh, no. Take it easy, sir. Steady now. Steady. Kenneth Wayne is just as welcome here now as he was four years ago. And no more. John, John, old friend, you can't do this. You're hitting a man when he is down. You've got to tell her about him. I can't do it. I can't take the responsibility of sending her to him if you won't help. John, he's leaving in an hour. Let him go. Is that plain? Let him go. You've chosen to empty your life of everything but hate. Well, 
I believe that same hate will be around you in the hereafter. And the sweet soul of Moneen will never get through it. I believe this, John, and I beg of you. I... I beg of you that you'll do something about it. Now, John. Now. seen him? Kenneth Wayne? Have you? I'm not quite sure. I went up to his house. Do you think that was... I'd give a great deal if I hadn't. Badly smashed up? No, not physically, but... Oh, I don't know what to think. He doesn't seem the same. He seems to have forgotten that we were ever... That we... I don't know what to think. So he ended it, eh? Well, perhaps it's for the best. You'll get over it, my dear. You didn't. But it's not the same, is it? You knew that somebody loved you. You were sure of it. You had that memory. I have nothing. I thought I was sure, but now I... I have nothing. His train leaves at 10. Oh, I wish you were gone. I can't help hoping the maddest things. If a car were to drive up, but it was he. Come back to me. That gate would have opened. He would have come into this room. <laughs> but you don't understand that, do you? Oh, yes. I understand. You know, it's the little things. His laugh. The crazy things he said and did. <laughs> he was absolutely crazy, you know. Doesn't make sense. Absolutely crazy. She said that once about me. It's no use. I'll always love him. I'm just that sort of a fool. I have no pride. I love him whatever he had done, however badly he treated me. And if he died, I'd always have loved him. All my life. As you loved her. Kathleen. My child, Kathleen, listen. I've got to tell you this. He's wounded. You mean Kenneth is wounded? Yes, badly. Wounded? Oh, no. Why didn't he tell me? He didn't think he had the right. Owen saw him at the station. And that was why. Oh, but doesn't he know I'd love him even if... God, the poor darling. But he does love me. He does love me. As if anything else matters, anything else in the world. Train leaves at ten. Is that clock right? I must catch him. Kathleen. I... I hope... I, I, I should like it if... Do you think you could possibly... Come back here again. And bring him with you. Oh. We'll both take care of him, won't we? Oh, hello. Oh. 
Oh. Kathleen seemed to think you needed me. Anything wrong? Wrong? Uh, not with me. Where is Kathleen? She seemed in a hurry. She's gone out of the station. She seemed anxious to get there before the London train left. Oh. She'll be coming home? They'll be coming home. They? That's what I said. Oh. I see. Well... Well, I'll be jogging along. Hmm? Uh, would you... Uh, would you care to play a little chess? I mean, now that you are here. Oh, don't mind if I do. Hmm. Forgotten your chess, hmm? Forgotten more than you ever knew. Ah. Wonder if she'll get there in time. We'll soon know. John, I know of someone who would be glad of what you've done tonight. Yes. She is glad. I know. Oh, uh, by the way, have I apologized to you, Owen? Apologize? For what? Right you are. Almost too dark to see. Well, <laughs> I would like to play one game and have you keep awake till the end. Hmm? John. you. I've missed you so much. You know, I almost made an awful mess of things. <laughs> you must forgive me, dearest. I, I'm getting very old. Old, darling? Why, look. Oh. Why then? Is this what they call dying? It's nothing, is it? Nothing, dear. And everything. We're together now, forever. And forever. <laughs> 